Yeah, thanks for staying with us still. Um, I will, uh, my name is Frau Greta. I'm a group leader, a research group leader at HITS in Heidelberg. I will shortly introduce our institute to demonstrate why, what the challenge is uh, re with regard to computing, scientific computing at our institute and why we are now starting using the uh, AWS cloud. The Heidelberg Institute for Theoretical Studies, in case you haven't been, you have been to Heidelberg, this is the Neckar, here is somewhere this very pretty Altstadt, and when you go up the mountain you reach the Heidelberg Castle, and then you just go a few hundred meters further uh, past Villa Bosch, and then you are at our institute, so a lush neighborhood. Uh, make sure to pass by when you are in Heidelberg. And actually it's quite a unique institute within Germany because it's a privately founded institute. Actually Klaus Schierer uh, is a co-founder of SAP and while or after dropping out of SAP he decided as a physicist from background to set up uh, the Klaus Schierer Foundation who fully funds our research institute, the picture that you see here, on this campus where also the foundation and other um, yeah, companies are located. Um, the Heidelberg Institute for Theoretical Studies is small and beautiful, one may maybe can say. We are 12 research groups uh, with roughly 100 scientists. We are all non-profit, so we do academic research. Our highly tightly connected to the Heidelberg University, but independent, and do various uh, uh, computational sciences in various disciplines, from physics to biology to computer linguistics. So here you see a list where you get an idea how interdisciplinary this setup is, with the overarching frame that we all use only and only, there's no wet lab, computations, theory, modeling, simulations, numerics, statistics, everything on the computer. And um, here you get a bit of an impression what the topics are. Uh, one major field is astrophysics uh, with several groups uh, um, involved here. And then on the other side we deal with molecules, biomolecules and sequence data, genomic sequence data on the other side. Uh, so overall we have a lot of data, we deal with various scales in our data, uh, so we have yeah, computational challenges we are facing here. Our equipment for the size of the institute regarding the hardware is, uh, is generally satisfying, say from a university research group perspective, we, are, we have a fairly large high performance cluster with uh, nearly 6,000 cores uh, currently, a storage in the petabyte scale uh, and uh, as we already have heard during these public sector talks once the server room is full it's full and that's the case for us so we can only substitute we cannot really grow and that is the bottleneck and here is where actually we partly uh, move our workloads to national and international supercomputing centers in Germany within Europe but also worldwide in the US um, and uh, that is where then also AWS comes into play. Now, as one example where we need high performance computing, I want to tell you in a few slides what my research topics are and what AWS could then do for us. Um, we are interested in actually how forces are sensed, generated in biological systems and living systems. So while you're sitting here, you move your muscle, your blood is flowing through your arteries and actually it's forces that act on single molecules in your body. So a lot of forces need to be, ne your body needs to withstand and react to these. So we have force sensors built into our body that actually, for example, reinforce your muscle or your bone in response to the forces that you are exerting or, or gravity, for example, is exerting. And to understand this better, we're using computational tools very similar to what you have in mind when you think of car crash tests. So what engineers do when they want to design a car or here just this wheel is that they look at the internal stress distribution. And that's what we do on single protein molecules in our body. So here you see a few examples of our research. This is a part of spider silk, which is a protein-based high-performance mechanical material, or a part of our muscle proteins, a blood coagulation factor. So all of these proteins are 
under high forces and we try to understand how they respond to force and carry these high force loads. And we do so by what is called molecular dynamic simulations. So we take those complex structures, put them into water, so these little dots you see here are now all water molecules, and try to understand how they move in time and space. So we actually get trajectories out of these thousands and thousands of particles over time, maybe millions or billions of time steps, at each of which we need to calculate forces and coordinates of all these atoms they exert on each other. Uh, so this is a high dimensional problem um, that is uh, computationally very demanding because of the long range forces between these particles. And typically uh, there's different molecular dynamics software available but those that we use and most others don't differ here, uh, the number of particles you can put on one processor is about 500, and now it often, uh, we often uh, run on like up to 1,000 or even more CPUs and generate easily terabytes of data in such simulations. So now we have, we have been able to do first tests on the Amazon cloud, Actually, since in Frankfurt, the C4 instances are available, which is just a few weeks ago, so these are very fresh numbers. We were able now to compare the performance at our HITS cluster and AWS. And to cut a long story short, I hear we hear kind of normalized, so to say, to the same frequency a number of um, hyper threads and get very, very similar uh, performance. What this here means is nanoseconds, so this is the real time of this protein that we can monitor it to move in nanoseconds, which is a billionth of a second um, uh, per day. And, and this is actually impressive because we don't have, just because we are in the cloud, any performance uh, loss, at least for this system, this one test system that we have done so far. Gromex is actually already uh, installed at uh, Amazon, so it was a fairly straightforward business. Um, we are working at the moment on an AWS grant um, and uh, will further test our own code extensions uh, within that grant. So we think that actually in our domain um, we are doing test simulations rather on the small side of calculations on our HITS internal cluster we a lot go to the supercomputing infrastructure for very big projects, which are computationally very expensive uh, and are scaling very well on these high-performance machines. But we see that actually the Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services Cloud uh, can give us um, an interesting, um, interesting additional uh, hand on, um, on compute time as it is flexible and uh, we can actually, um, for example, also run small sized systems that wouldn't scale on the supercomputing infrastructure. So any proposal we submit there will be rejected because it doesn't scale good enough. And yet we need a lot of uh, compute hours. And that is where uh, the cloud, uh, we think, uh, will come in in future more. So there's a few other developments at the moment. So in general, we think that um, peak requests in our development cluster would be interesting to uh, cover with EC2 instances. Archiving is something that uh, um, people at HITS are looking in, at. Glacier and other current developments are here. Maybe I mention um, that actually um, there's being set up a collaborative working platform with a very, very large data set uh, in the, um, 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 in the um, petabyte uh, range, I think, for the what is called the square kilometer array, which actually is a larger international astrophysics consortium. Or similarly, another colleague is looking at genome assembly, human genome assembly, with, uh, where he faces actually huge temporal storage requirements, again, in the petabyte scale. And as I mentioned more in detail, our molecular dynamic simulations and related codes there. And with this, I would like to close. Thanks for your attention.